In this video, we're going to dig more into tense phrases. So far, tense phrases have been the only thing we have without a bar level or a head. So really, we want our TPs to have a bar level and a head, so a T bar and a T. So there's some questions that we have now. What goes in T? Well, it's a tense phrase, so perhaps it is tense that goes in there. And the question is, well, also, do we always have T? Do we always have tense in our sentences? And when we don't have past, present, or future tense, what else can we put in there? Okay, so here's some very basic sentences just to show you what happens in T. I'm not going to draw the CPs for these because I want the focus to be on the TPs themselves. So in the last video I said, hey, if we don't want to use CPs or they're not necessary in the question, I won't draw them in. Uh, that's what I'm using here. Okay, so we have a sentence like he walked. And he walked is a past tense sentence. So how do we get that information in our trees? Well, the original assumption was that we'd put morphology in T. And what would happen is there would be movement from T down to the verb. So he walked. Okay, so this is really what we put in T. The problem is that, well, you know, it's not always the same morphology. So he walked, that is an ED ending, but something like he hit him versus he will hit him, there is no morphology. Hit just takes nothing for past tense. So instead, what we do is something a little more general, and we put this plus past feature mark in T, okay? And this past tense feature marker just moves down to the verb and gives it morphology. So in this tree, he plus past walk is realized as he walked when we say it and when we hear it, okay? So this is like this deep structure where we have some stuff in trees, there's some movement going on. This is just really basic movement. This is just the tense on T moving down to the verb phrase. Okay, that's how we do past tense. How do we do present tense? Well, for what about he walks? Well, again, we can do what we did before. We can say, oh, there's this S morpheme that moves down to walks, but, you know, this isn't generalizable to all languages. They don't have my, or this S inflectional morphology. So we just do minus past. And it's important that we don't do minus present or plus present here. So minus past plus past, we just want this difference between plus past and minus past. Some languages differentiate between future and non-future, in which case they'd use plus future or minus future instead. We really just want to stick to one feature. So this minus past goes down to walk, and then on the surface form we'd get he walks. Okay, so this is how tense is done. What about a sentence like he must walk? Okay, so must, this is a modal. This is a modal auxiliary verb, okay? He must walk. And we can see there's no inflection on our verb either. So what do we do with modals? And the solution is actually quite straightforward. Modals go in T, so he must walk. And in this case, there's not really any movement from T to V at all. We could say there is, it won't really change the word order, but it's not morphology, so we don't say there's movement. We just say, oh, T is in must, and that's where it is. Other modals, like he will walk, or he might walk, or he could walk, or he should walk, so on and so forth. Okay, so it's lots of different modals we can put in here. Uh, but the important part is that either we have a modal or we have tense. We're not going to have both. And we know they're not going to have both because we can't say something like he must walks. If these were in different positions, so if must wasn't in T and present tense or minus past was in T, then we should be able to have both of these. But because we can't have both, we know they must occupy the same position. Okay, that's just some really basic um, tests we can do to see if they're in T or not. Okay, so what goes under T? Tense information. And like I said before, it's gonna be minus past plus past if you're working in English. Other languages will just use minus future or plus future. 
you should never really use both. Especially in English, because we don't have a future marker. We only have past or minus past. And then if we want to say a future tense, like will eat, then we have this will, which is this modal auxiliary that we stick in. The other thing that goes in T are modals. So may, might, could, can, should, shall, will, would. Basically what we've seen before. Let's draw one tree. John knows that he was right. And now we have to include tense information in our trees. So once again, I'm not going to start out the top of the tree with a CP. I'll just start with the TP. So TP. And now with our new structure, we're always going to have a T bar and a T, and the complement of T will be the VP. Okay, so John knows that he was right. So John is our subject. And knows, well, knows is not past tense, it's present tense. So this will be minus past. And there's two things you can do. Either you can say this is minus past and you can draw a little arrow to say that this becomes nose, or we could also just write the S on nose. That's fine as well. John knows that he was right. Okay, so this is going to be a CP complement. So C, we have an overt that. This is not a question. And he is right is our inner TP. So once again, we just do the same structure, he, okay, now we have t bar and t, what is was? Well, was is past tense, that's past, and we have a verb phrase, the v bar v, uh, in this case, let's just say that this is, the verb is, and it's an adjective phrase that is the adjective right. Okay, uh, this, this may be reevaluated in the later time, but just for now, this is a pretty good structure. John knows that he was right. And the key part here is that we've now included tense information in our trees, and we now have T bar levels as well. So every type of phrase in our tree now has a bar level and a head. And this is what we want, to have a nice consistent theory where everything is being obeyed where we don't have any inconsistencies, we don't have phrases without heads, um, every phrase has a head. Okay, if you have any questions about TPs, please leave them in the comments below, and I'll answer them as best as I can.